Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Flow, the Flow blockchain. And I'm going to ask the question, would I buy or should you buy, not financial advice, Flow in the bear market? If you like this content, smash up the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you want to get caught up in the series, this is part 30 of 1001. You can see a link to every video, the entire list in the description of this video. But otherwise, let's go ahead and dive right on in. So would I buy flow in the bear market? Um, now, I want to be full disclosure here. We are entering into a new territory, a sort of new territory in the fact that every cryptocurrency that I've reviewed so far, except for Leo, which is just a really re weird one, um, every one I, I'm, I'm familiar with enough that really the amount of research that I had to put into it wasn't substantial. With Flow, it enters into a new territory of like, all right, now we're entering these cryptocurrencies that I'm not as familiar with, and Flow being the first of those. And so I had to spend a little bit more time doing research. And here is my conclusion. Uh, Flow is a layer one. It's a blockchain that at least needs to be on our radar. You know, I'm not going to give it a glowing endorsement, but is it, you know, it, does it have potential to grow in this space, and especially, especially ahead of a following upcoming uh, euphoria phase, whenever that may be? I, I would say it, it definitely has potential. Um, now, if we're going to go deeper than that, would this be one of the big blockchains where you're going to build on and the future. My guess, you know, having not heard many people talk about flow, my guess is it's probably not going to be the king or one of the kings in this space. But there is something we absolutely have to take seriously when we're considering flow. And that is, you know, looking at its ecosystem here, not too bad what they have going on here. And the big thing that I want to point your attention to is this right here. NBA Top Shot. And so and the NBA partnered with Dapper Labs, which runs Flow, and they decided to partner with Flow. Of all blockchains, of all places they could have built, they went with Flow. NBA Top Shot did a billion dollars of sales in 2021 of their NFTs. For me, it's pretty simple as I'm looking at Top Shot. I haven't I I, I don't own any Top Shot NFTs. I don't know if I ever will, but it's like I, I think they have an easy way that they could really make a lot of money and let's just make basketball cards. You know, it, it, how, how difficult is that? But instead they're focusing on moments and I, I have not been since about the time that they launched. I don't know if specifically they're making basketball cards, but if you make basketball cards as NFTs, that sounds amazing. Why don't, why wouldn't you do that? You know? And so it's one of these, things. just, just, I think that they could get their act in order and that they could do much more than what they're doing. And you can see, you know, all right, there's games, there's metaverse potential, there's payments, DeFi, there's marketplace, there's developer tools, there's art and community. So we're thinking about the ecosystem of, of flow and there's growth potential in every everything. You know, metaverse is gonna be huge moving forward. And so yeah, flow flow is gonna have a piece of that pie. We'll see about NFTs. NBA NFTs, I'm, I'm you know, I, I would pretty much say, yeah, there's potential there for NBA, NBA NFTs to have a wonderful future. Um, so we'll see, uh, th there's, there's, there's potential for growth moving forward with flow for sure. Now looking at the price action, this will have been the upcoming cycle, the uh, upcoming, the next bull run, whenever that is, will have been flow's second major cycle. It launched in January of 2021. What a crazy time to launch. And then immediately took off a lot of, you know, peaked in February, March of, of 2021, at the same time as a lot of um, a lot of altcoins, it peaked. You know, spring, late winter, early spring of 2021, put in a double top, and then never really you know came back to that price. And now, it, just price wise, looking at it, it's in a pretty good position where I'm seeing a dollar ninety one as low as what a dollar eighty six, a dollar twenty six. And I price wise, this looks like it has a lot of potential to you know even if it just reaches that high, it's down ninety five percent from its peak. And so, do I do I think that flow will put in a higher high next cycle. Honestly, I 
I don't know. I, you know, looking at a chart like this, I, I don't know because it is down 95%. But, you know, even if it just puts in a lower high, it goes up to $20, that's a 10x from here. And I would be shocked if it didn't at least go up to $20 by the next cycle. And who knows? Yeah, it, it certainly could put in a higher high, just depending on how much this ecosystem grows, how big of a piece of the pie that they get. You know, um, I'm trying to think, you know, Solana, I mean, I, I can't think, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, Solana was a nine figure market cap cryptocurrency flows currently at $2 billion. Could this get up to nine figures? Ah, uh, that's a 50 X from here. Uh, I, I'll just say it's not entirely outside of the realm of possibility for flow. Um, what else can we talk about with flow circulating supply? 1 billion total supply, 1.4 billion, no max supply. That's really important to understand. But what I'm reading with the tokenomics is actually pretty encouraging to me because here's something I want to point out to you is, um, flow has low monetary inflation. That's what they're talking about. And so in its steady state, this is the part I wanted to read in its steady state flow guarantees a set payout to node operators and only issues new tokens as necessary to make up the difference between transaction fees and that guaranteed payment as transaction fees approach this payout amount, new issuance approaches 0%. If transaction fees exceed the payout amount, they are held in an escrow account and used to offset future inflation indefinitely. And so flow does not want to be inflationary, but it will be inflationary if certain conditions force it to be to be so I will take that in comparison thinking about something like cosmos I said cosmos is 7 to 20 percent inflationary annually Cadena is I think right now 13 to 14 percent inflationary annually avalanche is pretty heavily inflationary for the next couple of years before it's going to flatten out I will take something that is pretty much not inflationary you know if there is a percentage whatever that percentage is, is it's going to be pretty low and so i will take that okay i'll take that over the percentages i already gave you and then uh, one other thing that i'm just paying attention to it's on my radar as like a ooh, you know we've seen this happen before um stable coins on flow all right brace yourselves fiat backed stable coins our fungible tokens whose supply is based on equivalent amount of fiat currency, blah, blah, blah. Like all flow users, holders of fiat backed stable coins still require minimum balance of flow. This can be provided on their behalf by the application. And then algorithmic stable coins, think Luna, think UST, flow has an al algorithmic stable coin or they, they work with algorithmic stable coins and they use flow token itself as collateral to create secondary token whose supply is adjusted automatically to stabilize its value relative to given, given to fiat currencies. So will flow pull a Luna? Not necessarily, but it's something on my radar. I constantly, if I'm gonna be owning any flow, I want to be paying attention as much as possible to seeing if flow would be affected by an algorithmic stable coin that could dump the market. All right, so other things that I, that I wanna point out with flow, there isn't really a ton. Listen, all right, looking at this page right here, there is, there's something to be desired with their opening line here. Flow is a new blockchain built for the next generation of apps, games, and digital assets that power them. Every other layer one that I have reviewed so far, they have gone out of their way to point out how unique they are. The fact that flow isn't really giving us much just based off, off their front page. It's like, what makes you unique flow? Why, why do I care? Why would I want to be with you? I want to see that on the front page. You know, I can read that in white paper, I'm sure. And you can explain to me why you're so unique and why you're the way to go. But like, what is this? This, this is this communicates to me that they they're content being who they are you know the 34th largest crypto in the world or whatever maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm being too judgmental or hateful or whatever again this is something that i am pretty new to doing research on flow so i would if you have comments and you think flow is the future you think that it's going to be the number one blockchain in the world that you can build on and have dapps on and all that let me know your reasoning in the comments i am open to your suggestions you know just I, i'm getting pretty tired of one thing in particular it's like 
I this is these videos are meant for discussion and people think when I'm making these videos that I am a hundred percent settled in this and I hold a lot of these opinions pretty open handedly and any opinion that I have in flow, I will hold it open handedly. But yeah, I'd buy some flow in the bear market. It's down ninety five percent. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think it would be more likely than not that flow will reach a higher high next cycle. Give me that 20x. Give me that 30, 40x. Yes, please. I'll take it. But that is all I have for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Smash up that like button. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you in another video. Peace.